Greetings and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, where the Mexican Socialist Republic has been enjoying a little period of peace after the conquest of Cuba. We've had a good few months of peaceful expansion and research and developing of our economy. We've got on top of a number of things that we had neglected for quite some time. And now, once again, the eyes of the hawks, especially the generals in the Mexican Socialist Republic, begin to turn outward, and we begin to think to ourselves, hmm, where might make a soft target for us to gain further expansion, especially because we really want that fourth research slot. Look, we, we really want this fourth research slot, but we need 50 factories, and building them takes ages. I mean, we're still building this factory here. We've nearly finished it. We've then got that factory, but frankly, we're still miles away. So conquering factories now that's the msr way of doing things that's the way we do things in uh, the green dawn and um well where is available to us obviously we've got colombia here and i think we should probably start justifying war on colombia we've got some troops on the border i don't know how tough colombia is going to be i suspect they could be quite difficult indeed but of course, we do have Gallardo here on the border and his legion of Mexican bravado and joy, which is um, just legendary in the MSR right now for their incredible boldness and, and cunning plans. Perhaps Gallardo could come up with some kind of like idea for getting straight to Bogota without having to even fight the Colombian army. He could dress up his men, for example, in uh, monks' outfits and pretend that they are indeed on some kind of pilgrimage, that they are simply a, a mere holy company who are traveling to the world-renowned holy sites in Bogota to... Um, uh, engage in some kind of, of worship and um, then take them completely over whilst they're not paying attention. Well, okay, maybe that is not the correct plan, but nonetheless, I think we should probably start justifying war anyway um, down here. And also, I think it probably makes sense to take out these islands here, um, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, of course, because, well, I mean, we've kind of started with Cuba and it seems like we would be sort of leaving the job unfinished if we didn't take them over. They hopefully have factories and stuff. Look, we're not entirely sure what he has. We don't have any intel on them at all. Nobody from Mexico has ever, ever been to Haiti or the Dominican Republic. We just, we don't have any idea what's going on over there. Um, but it doesn't matter. We'll declare war anyway. Or at least we will justify war. And we might as well justify war on both, right? Because we'll navally invade Haiti, I think, because it's smaller. And then we'll march on uh, overland to conquer the Dominican Republic. I think it is probably the right way. Look, they are fascists, the Dominican Republicans. Uh, we will justify war on both of them, democracies and fascists alike. It's all the same to us in the Mexican Socialist Republic, and this, of course, is within the Americas. So we care. We care about what happens there. We care about the workers of these islands and think that they should be um, completely and totally liberated to go about their business, drinking tequila, smoking Cuban cigars. Um, we can possibly add some kind of luxury product from uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. I don't know what sort of luxury products they might have. Look, let's just unpause it whilst our, our armies begin their procedures. In fact, we might as well plan this invasion. Um, I think... Like, we can just go straight for Port-au-Prince. We don't really want to go anywhere else anyway because we don't want to get stuck fighting a protracted war um, without access to a port for supply. So we might as well take the port. And the port is Port-au-Prince, funnily enough. So, um, so we'll do that. Uh, and we're going to send a prince among men, Martin Bustamante, to do the job. Uh, we'll do a naval invasion. Here we go. From here to here, we're going to assign all of our guys to it. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough. We could possibly bring in some reinforcements to assist. We don't actually have any reinforcements. When we've made some reinforcements, if the invasion hasn't been triggered yet, um, we'll uh, we'll send those reinforcements to join him. I mean, he can only take an additional one troop, I suspect, unless we've got like more troop transport capability now. Research has finished. An engineering company won at long last. At long last, we are beginning to flesh out the capacities and capabilities of our infantry divisions. Um, it's about time. Do we want to keep doing that? Uh, or well, what are we actually researching here at the moment? We're currently researching mechanized and mountain infantry. Probably makes sense in that case to uh, maybe switch out to doing something else. How are our engineering uh, research technologies going? 1940s, we can get improved computing machines. 
improved computing machines, I mean electronic digital computers can now be made, which are programmable. Although still expensive and large, these machines allow for intelligence analysis far beyond human capacity. Um, that sounds like a great thing to do. Let's get that. The boffins will love to have improved computing machines. They can kind of use it for researching and maybe in their spare time they can program some kind of uh, very early version of Zork perhaps or something like that, some other text adventure. Um, I suppose this predates things like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings at the moment, but nonetheless, I'm sure there are creative Mexicans among the Mexican Socialist Republic elite uh, storytellers division who would be prepared to team up with the Boffins to write some kind of awesome punch card based um, early computing machine video game. Um, without the video part, obviously, because the video part probably doesn't exist at this stage. But nonetheless, uh, we'll let them get on with that, and hopefully it won't distract them too thoroughly from the various researchers and things that they need to do. Um, we've got quite a bit of political power here. We could possibly hire ourselves another advisor. We could maybe change our export focus, but I'm a little bit dubious about doing this. We could go to free trade, uh, but if we go to free trade, then resources to market plus 80%, but factory, factory output goes up. Um, but yeah, we might we might wind up trading away stuff that we actually need. Limited exports, factories to resources to market plus twenty five percent, factory output plus five percent, research time plus one. I don't think it's really worth spending anything trading up, changing our trade laws right now. We'll just remain on export focus for the time being. We probably should change our conscription laws, however. Um, not enough fine young Mexican boys are joining the Mexican Revolutionary Army, and they obviously need a little bit of encouragement in the form of some stirring political recruitment propaganda whipped up by the Mexican film industry, um, which of course is now almost entirely led by uh, Gallardo here because he has become so famous and so loved throughout the Mexican Socialist Republic um, that everybody just looks to him all the time. So let's go for some extensive conscription. We could go to service by requirement, but Rather than taking the hits now to factory output and construction speed, like I think it's probably better to retain our uh, industry as much as we can. We'll get a little bit of an increase to our training time, but we get 5% of our recruitable population. Yes, we shall indeed replace limited conscription with extensive conscription as fronted by Gallardo and uh, the propaganda campaign, which has sorted out our manpower mightily. Look at that. We're up to 511,670. Uh, manpower available to us, which means hopefully, uh, well, look, we've already got, we've already got a division of uh, motorized infantry. Let's send them out just to join up with Buster Manti and team. Um, just add a tenth division for this invasion when it eventually happens. 24 of 63 days, but the war justification will take longer than that. We should also, I didn't actually start justifying war on Colombia, did I? Let's start justifying war on Colombia too. Um, why not? Uh, we could take them province at a time, but they've only got three provinces and we actually want all of them because half the point here is gaining access to Brazil to support a potential revolution there in the near future. So, there we go. We have done it, or rather we are doing it. Um, old Dino Enka here uh, has been receiving his scripts from um, Gallardo, the de facto leader of the entire country now. Wow, this guy is just becoming more and more epic. Um, with every passing moment. Uh, he's using, obviously, his context in the film industry to, um, you know, to, to get the best writers to write up the speeches, to whip up the Mexican Socialist Republican um, peoples in noble and uh, patriotic fervor to begin conquering the rest of the world. Dino Enka angered by Colombian posturing. Those naive citizens of the MSR who imagine Colombia as a people of peace are entirely out of touch with reality. Those who live at our border know that they hate us with their silly faces and their pulling down the trousers in order to give us the moon. Yes, this is the way that they treat us, these Colombians, and we shall stand for it no more. Rise up, members of the Mexican Socialist Republic, and we shall take the country of Colombia for ourselves, um, or whatever it is that he was told to say. Regardless, we must be ready for war. Um, but we are ready for war. Oh, yes, uh, we certainly are. In fact, you know what? Let's actually 
start drawing up some battle plans. Um, first of all, we've got a front line already. That's good. Uh, in that case, let's get some offensive lines. And I think what we want to do is we kind of want to come down here and take this port like this. Okay, to conquer that bit. Uh, and then we want another separate line. World news! The fall of Rome. Allied forces recently entered Rome after the surrender of its garrison. And Allied forces... Allied forces recently entered Rome after the surrender of its garrison, and the city is now under military occupation. Most historical landmarks remain intact, not that we care, having weathered yet another battle for control over the city. For now at least, Allied troops have stayed out of the Vatican City at the request of the Holy See. Um, wow, the fall of Rome is an important milestone in the Italian campaign. Some are wondering if this means an end to the organized resistance to the advancing Allied armies on the peninsula. This is a significant development. In fact, I think we need to go over and take a look. As much as we don't really care what goes on outside of our borders, the fact that the United Kingdom, it's only 1940, 3rd of August 1940, and the United Kingdom uh, has taken Rome and a significant chunk of Italy. Italy is on the back foot here. Um, and this could be bad for the, uh, for the Axis forces, which we don't really care about, except in the fact that it may mean that the United States won't bother to get involved at all, and um, we'll have to take them on on our own, which would not be ideal. I'm not going to lie to you. I would prefer them to get stuck in over here. I wonder if there's anything I can do. If there's anything I can do to assist. I could send some forces over, but I don't want to join the Axis. That's just that's just crazy talk. Um, I suppose I could declare war on somebody and try and distract somebody could send I could send the first canoe fleet to blockade Great Britain and to prevent them from sending out any additional forces yeah somehow I don't think that's gonna work uh, too well well we'll just have to wait and see how it develops there really isn't very much that we can do um, and we have enough on our plate as it is if we have to take on the US alone then so be it so be it um, maybe we could like get friendly with with Japan Anyway, we shall, we shall, we shall cross such bridges when we come to them. For now, let's just unpause it. I was trying to plan an attack here as well, wasn't I? Let's do a second attack order, um, just to sweep down here and secure this region using the rivers kind of as protection. Um, and uh, I don't really want to go straight into here if I can avoid it. I, I, because these are mountains, it's going to cause us a bit of a problem. I'd rather kind of conquer around. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll sort of like invade up to the rivers uh, and then we will reassess our position once we're at that point, I think. Um, and we kind of... Well, I suppose we can just leave him to plan exactly which units are best to send in each direction and assume, being Gallardo, that he will come up with absolutely the best plan. Japan has declared war on the Netherlands. I thought the Netherlands was kind of out of it. Um, where is Japan? Japan, Japan. There you are, Japan. Where have you declared war on the Netherlands? Wow. Wow. The Netherlands. That's uh, still going strong, as it turns out. Just not where they originally were. Oh look, they're still, they are here, look. Eindhoven. Eindhoven holds out against uh, the aggression of the Third Reich. Um, the, the German Reich, which marches forth and uh, is, is battling on both fronts here. I don't know if they're going to hold out though. I mean, the might of the Soviet Union, France has yet to capitulate at all. Um, never mind. We shall, we shall care not. Uh, how is our justification going over here in uh, high 80? We are justifying 59 of 125 days, so we've got a while yet to wait. Well, the invasion, on the plus side, the invasion will be well prepped by then. So, um, you know, we can be pleased about that. Let's add. World news! Trotsky survives assassination attempt. After a violent struggle in his Mexico City home earlier today, Leon Trotsky killed a would-be assassin with the ice axe the man tried to attack him with. The killer has been identified as a Spanish national, believed to have been in the employ of the NKVD. Trotsky was once the top lieutenant and heir presumptive of Vladimir Lenin, but after a failed power struggle he was forced into exile from the Soviet Union by Joseph Stalin. Speaking to the press, Trotsky denounced the attempt on his life as yet another cowardly plot hatched by Stalin to silence his critics. 
Interesting. Wow, Trotsky is hanging out in the Mexican Socialist Republic. Um, maybe, maybe we should see if we can recruit him into our government in some form. Um, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Come on, Trotsky, come work for us. Um, do we even have? Look, maybe we can get him as a political advisor. Uh, mm, we could get Pluto, Plu, Plu, Plutarco, Plutarco, Plutarco E. Kelles. Dino Enker calls to aid Hyatan workers. Is there a greater lie than the supposed liberty of the Hayton people? Where once they slaved under somebody else, now they slave under new people who are very, very enslaving of them. Unlike the Mexican Socialist Republic, it is even said that in Haiti they have no tequila. Can you imagine the life of a worker without the ambrosia nectar of the gods that is the beautiful tequila? If you cannot imagine this, then just picture hell and you will have an idea. So we must bring tequila to them by force. Excellent. Uh, we will crush their bourgeois dictatorship and rain tequila down upon the cheering workers of the country of Haiti um, in due course. We don't actually have enough political power to hire any of these people now. Uh, unfortunately, none of them is Trotsky, which I think is a missed opportunity. I think that was a missed trick right there for Mexico. Dino Enka questions Colombian sovereignty. Who determines the borders of a nation? I do, and I am telling you today, there should be no border between Mexico and Colombia because Colombia belongs to me. I have found papers, old and ancient papers, that clearly state Colombia was given to the Mexican people by Zorro in the days of old, and therefore we shall go back in to conquer them for ourselves. Excellent. We must rally behind this cause. Viva Mexico! I got it right this time. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out my errors. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can't actually hire any of these people or indeed do anything else political right now other than read um, kind of dodgy speeches made up uh, on the spot by uh, Dino Enka's speechwriting team who consist of, well, me, basically. Just me, on my own, uh, sitting in front of a early computing device, um, tapping away when I'm not playing um, Mexican Zork that is, of course. Um, national focus complete political commissars details. To ensure that our policies are followed in military practice, we will introduce politically appointed officials into military ranks. An excellent idea if ever I heard one. Um, uh, of course, Gallardo is probably behind this being uh, politically sound shall we say um, possibly even like I said the uh, de facto actual true leader of the country the MSR um, good all right uh, that will help us change in popularity of communist 20% so we have solidified our power here and we also gained 200 political power so we now could hire Trotsky if he were available hmm but he is not never mind um, Dino Enka questions the motives of Colombia is there any doubt that Colombia is preparing for war? It cannot be doubted, because we have heard from many people that this is the case. And people do not lie, as you well know. At least not Mexican Socialist Republicans! Good, um, at least through war there will be an end to this conflict. Meanwhile, let's just pause it here whilst we uh, pick our next national focus. So we could go down to ideological fanaticism, gains national spirit, ideological fanaticism, uh, plus 5% division attack in core territory. Could be good, especially if America attacks, we could get like a, a fairly significant defense bonus. And then we could go on to possibly technology sharing and creating our own faction, which we kind of want to do. Um, we do, in fact, we would need ideological fanaticism to create our own faction. So we definitely want that soon but possibly not immediately next it might be better uh, either we haven't gone down armament at all yet and this will give us free military factories which of course will be quite useful um, construction effort completion time 70 days adds two building slots and two civilian factories oh wow I don't didn't even notice that that was there um, secret weapons oh, secret weapons and nuclear effort if only I had the research um, to be able to do these things uh, then I would totally be doing them right now uh, as is the case 
plus plus fifty percent research bonus for air doctrines, and plus fifty percent research bonus for for various planes and things. This might be good because we haven't really researched planes at all, so we could sort of grab this and then get the maximum benefit as we try and like surge up a research tree for planes, but not trains and uh, certainly not automobiles because the Mexican Socialist Republic already has the finest automobiles uh, in all of the land. I don't think we're going to be able to form the faction just yet. So let's leave this for now and we'll come back to that when we're ready to form a faction. Um, so I think we will probably go for construction effort and we'll continue to ignore aeroplanes for the time being. Um, we should probably, we do, we can actually switch this over to tactical um, tactical bombers so we should probably do that because we've got enough close air support at the moment. Um, and let's even transfer some of our production into this so that we can get a fair number of these cranked out ready to support our war effort because we may not have uh, airfields close enough to be able to get our close air support in so having some tactical bombers to come in from range is probably a good idea we have insufficient resources alas we need we need some aluminium to build our planes let's get it from the soviet union they've got loads of aluminium and they certainly don't mind shipping it over to us Excellent. We shall unpause it again and continue preparing for the war on Haiti and uh, the Dominican Republic and Colombia. And um, we, I think we might be getting ahead of ourselves to start justifying yet another war on top of this. I don't know how long the war in Colombia is going to take. Um, I'm hoping this will be quick and we can bring um, old, Dian old uh, Martin Bustamante and his ultimate cunningness legion to assist with the conquering of Colombia. And then we're either going to be wanting to look to Venezuela or possibly Ecuador or Peru um, or all three at the same time. Uh, Ecuador would be a quick win. Ecuador would be a quick win. Uh, they're democratic. What's Venezuela? They're fascist. I have a feeling that America will probably be less disturbed at us taking fascist countries. Um, Colombia's democratic. Okay. So be it. So be it. The Colombians, your democracy shall uh, know our wrath. Mountain infantry has been researched. Excellent. Good. Uh, we could kind of do with some mountain infantry for going into Colombia um, because they've got lots of mountains in Colombia. Lots and lots of mountains. All right. Fine. Uh, what are we researching? We are researching mechanized infantry and improved computing devices. We should probably... Uh, go down our land doctrine a bit further. We've, rather, di rather disappointingly, we've only researched the first thing in land doctrine. Um, we should probably just try and plow down through this now. We'll keep one researcher, one boffin, continually coming up with new ways to uh, use our infantry forces, our land forces, more and more effectively for the glory of the Mexican Socialist Republic. Let's unpause it. How long have we got for this war to break out? Um... 81 of 125 days. Okay, not too far. We can modify our government. Uh, we've actually got a lot of political power right now. A lot of political power. We could get another political advisor. Let's not bother with him just yet. Instead, uh, what do we have? Military high command, maybe? Armor expert, strategic bombing, naval air defense. No, we don't want any of those. Those are the same. Yeah. Uh, chief of the Navy. Chief of the Navy. Who could be chief of the Navy? Who but Canoe Guy really could be chief of the Navy? But apparently he's not even in the running. Uh, Victor Tapia Brunes, naval maneuvers, naval speed plus 10%, or commercial raiding efficiency. Or oh, we could be pirates. Pirates of the Mexican Re Socialist Republic. Um, wow, I'm quite tempted. Quite tempted by both of those. Um, tank designer, ship designer, aircraft designer, naval air... Heavy Air Company, Heavy Aircraft Designer, Strategic Bombing, Strategic Bomb plus 10%, Air Research Time minus 10%. Ooh, ah, Cantona. Yeah, let's get one of these. Heavy Fighter Reliability plus 20%, Tactical Bomber Reliability plus 20%, minus 10% Air Research Time. Let's get a Medium Air Company dude to come in. Um, he's, he's a dude. He's just a dude. He's just this dude, you know? Um, we've got a couple of recruits have been uh, prepared already so let's send them down to join up with the uh, first the first legion of Mexican socialist uh, bravado and joy under the command of Dino Enka of course they can they can come down and 
be prepared to join in with the glorious Colombian offensive when it takes place. What are we actually recruiting at the moment? We're just recruiting some truck chicos. Oh, mountaineers. All right, hold on. Let's edit mountaineers. We'll add support artillery and engineering company. And we'll add mountaineers and more mountaineers for a combat width of 10. And we will save that. Um, we should probably give them an awesome name. Um, an awesome Mexican name for uh, mountaineering special forces. Okay, let's call them... Cabra Magnifico <laughs> Magnifica Cabra Magnifica Yeah? Is that, is that okay? Um, please tell me that's okay because I think it's kind of awesome. The Cabra Magnifica division um, will be uh, will be just awesome. We're going to give them a combat width of 10 so again they'll be sort of like smaller than our big divisions but more specialists better for mountains we can use them to plug gaps here and there as well um i think that makes sense let's rename them the cabra magnifica and we will uh, get started on making three of them three of them at the same time um ready to come in and we will deploy them somewhere with a port uh i guess i guess here in costa rica there we go. Excellent. The, the Cabra Magnifica divisions are preparing themselves, or at least they're in training. Mexicans are going to be just queuing up to join the Cabra Magnifica. I'm pretty sure about that. They're going to be, they are going to be um, the most well-renowned. I mean, I'm almost tempted to change old uh, Dino, and uh, old Guiardo here to, um, to have his company be one of them. Um, but I'm not going to because he likes riding on a horse. Even though he's not actually technically associated with any of the, the cavalry divisions. But, you know, we like to think that he is. And uh, that's the most important thing. Um, how are we doing? Are we closer to invasion yet? 105 of 125 days. We're nearly there. Let's just speed up the clock a little bit and see if we can kick off this offensive before the end of the episode. It will be, hopefully, a glorious attack. 113, 114, time ticks on. Dino Enka questions Colombian sovereignty. Previously I asked to determine the borders of Colombia, and I have received a letter from Zorro himself, who says, and I quote, The Colombians belong to Mexico. The workers of Colombia cry out for liberation by the Mexican Socialist Republic. I ask you people of Mexico, how can you not answer such a call from Zorro himself? We must rise up and take this country of bourgeois intellectuals and crush them beneath the boot of the socialist revolution. Um, we must, we must rally behind this cause, Dino Enka. You're quite right. Let's, uh, let's just assume that that is going to happen in the near future, shall we? We have three civilian factories. We must have completed a civilian factory. Um, in fact, look, wow, we've completed all orders. We better put some fresh orders in. We should maybe, like, think about putting some anti-air in, like, along the border here with America, as we have no air defense at the moment, really, at all, just in case they attack. Let's do that. Let's put in, a, like, a line of anti-air. We'll also put in some radar stations. There we go. Just kind of, like, just, just prepping, just prepping us a little bit. Uh, and then maybe we'll uh, improve our infrastructure a bit so that we can ship troops up and down the country a little bit faster. There we go. And uh, we'll top it off with some more civilian factories. Uh, we'll get a couple here in Jalisco and uh, maybe in Chiapas as well. There we go. We've queued up a whole load of orders, which hopefully um, will make us completely and utterly immune from attack. Meanwhile... On the, the strait of this bit between Cuba and Haiti, tension is rising. A storm gathers on the horizon. The time for the Mexican Socialist Republic to launch their invasion has come. War goal justification complete. Very well then. Justification for conquering the Dominican Republic for Mexican. For the Mexican Socialist Republic is finished. And for Haiti, for that matter, which is good because Haiti is where we actually want to invade. Um, our forces are ready to attack. Our preparation bonus is zero. But you know what? He's had ample time to prepare, so I can only assume that that means um, he couldn't be bothered or something. Uh, this guy should probably join the attack as well. Look, division is... Division 
Just take him in. It's uh, we're talking about Martin Buster Mandy here. This is not a man who is coy. This is not a man who is slow to execute his plans when the time comes. He just takes the decision. We attack! And he leaps into the sea on... Uh, he doesn't actually have a horse, to be fair. Perhaps he has taken the truck chicos as his command division. So he just drives his truck, which he assumes to be amphibious, into the sea. Um, and and off they go, just, just charging. They haven't actually gone anywhere yet. Are you going? Do we need to speed up? Oh, we haven't declared war. Hold on. Hold on. Declare war! War declaration has been completed. There we go. We are now going in. The attack has commenced. That may have been why we weren't actually getting a preparation bonus, to be fair. Um, do we now have? We still don't have a preparation bonus. But I assume we don't need a preparation bonus. Look, battle has been joined. Battle has been joined. What time of day it is? It is currently night. It is a daring night invasion of Hyati, led by... Martin Buster Manti busting all of his Mantis in a row as he charges headlock into the guns of Port-au-Prince, ready and willing to seize the port in the name of the Mexican Socialist Republic, and then on into the Dominican Republic. I, I imagine. Although let's let's like conquer here first. Oh, we haven't got any planes supporting us. Hold on. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, we've got some close air support in Cuba. I guess it's out of range. So let's get the tactical bombers. We've only got ten. Well, okay. Ten's better than none. Ten tactical bombers deploying. Obviously, this is a slight failure of of um, of, of planning. Uh, but, you know, these things happen sometimes for the Mexican Socialist Republicans. Tactical bombers are deploying. 74%, 77%, 80%. They're nearly there. We're winning anyway, to be fair, without air support. So it's not the end of the world. And close air support. Can our tactical bombers reach... Here they come! Oh yes! Taking off! Taking off and flying into the sunrise as the mission to support Martin Bustamante is given a go. Two planes, just two, but that's all it's going to take. I mean, Haiti really doesn't appear to have much in the way of military forces. It's taking them a day so far to fly down the length of Cuba. These are quite slow planes, unfortunately, but you know what? That's just the way things go um, in 1940. Um, it's just something you just have to get used to if you're going to live in the past, like me. Um, it looks like there are only two divisions defending all of Haiti, so this should be a pretty straightforward attack. We're currently winning 89, uh, due to last another 27 days, but once the planes arrive, hopefully that will be significantly less. Look, here they come. Here they come. Our new, our new off-the-production line tactical bombers flying in dropping their tactical bombs upon our enemy. There we go, there's one, and another. There it is, right in the Port-au-Prince Bay. I don't think the farmers, are, or rather the fishermen, probably more accurately than the farmers, are gonna be terribly pleased about that. Well, this attack could go on for some time, and we're probably gonna to have to wrap it up there, and we shall complete this attack. Next time, we shall see if Martin Bustamante is able to move to... We shall see if Martin Bustamante is able to bust yet another awesome naval attack uh, and uh, win some glory and respect for himself. Which, frankly, he is... I mean, even though he is without doubt our second greatest commander, he still lives in the shadow of Gallardo and, and wants to kind of prove himself. And this is going to be an attack that's all him. Gallardo isn't even here. He's miles away. If all goes well, then maybe they will meet up in Colombia in some future war. But until then, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Weird Wizard, and I will see you later.